the biggest piece of news for OU football this week is that they have hired a new wide receivers coach. Uh, they poached him at Jones from Texas Tech. He will be the wide receivers coach and passing game coordinator here at the University of Oklahoma. And when you look at his background, coming from Tech, right, where he was the pass game coordinator and wide receivers coach, before that he was the wide receivers coach at KU. And some people may remember he actually took over as the interim head coach before they hired Lance Leipold there in Lawrence. Uh, before that, he was with Tech, again, with Cliff Kingsbury. And before that, he was the head coach at South Oak Cliff High School in Dallas. And before that, he had a bunch of other coaching jobs at the, at the high school level in the DFW area. And Ted, I'm assuming that that experience in the DFW era, uh, area was a big driver to why he was hired here at Oklahoma. Yeah, you got to imagine, um, you know, I it, it's a hire that I'm not going to say caught me off guard. I just, I don't know. Um, it wasn't a name that was, you know, someone that I was thinking of or or thought was a target that they were going after until way later. But yeah, I, I think I think recruiting is always critical. And, you know, if the way I look at it is Joey McGuire kept him on um, and had him coach the wide receivers. And I, if, if Joey McGuire is good as he is recruiting the state of Texas, if he signs off on you uh, as a recruiter to, to, to be there, then I think that tells me quite a bit. Um, yeah. Those, those recruiting connections in Texas high school, I mean, that seems to be kind of the growing trend, doesn't it? Is hiring ex high school, Texas football coaches on your staff. I mean, obviously that uh, McGuire's done that at tech. Um, Matt rule kind of started that with uh, hiring the Joey McGuire there at Baylor. And I think it's kind of starting to catch on a little bit. Yeah. And it, it makes a lot of sense. Anyone that knows anything about that Texas high school football's association, like for lack of a better term, let, let's call it a club. I'm not going to call it a cult. I'm going to call it a club, but it, it it's tight knit and it's meaningful, man. It is really, really meaningful in that state. So it's like a the, casting agency for college football players. Exactly. It, it is. And I, I think that's why when you look at the statements that Brent Venables had in the official release, like the thing that really stood out to me, and he said all kinds of great things about Emmett Jones's ability to coach, his ability to build relationships, like his his passion for winning, like all that stuff. But the quote that stood out to me was, He's a coaching giant in Texas high school football. I, I don't think there's any doubt that Emmett Jones can coach, but this feels like it's all about Cruton. Mm -hmm. And, and we've talked a lot about the need for Oklahoma to upgrade the talent on the roster. And if Emmett Jones can coach wide receivers at a high level, which I expect him to be able to do, but if he can be your ace recruiter there in the state of Texas, that's worth its weight in gold, man. And let's be real. I, and I think LaDamian Washington did a really good job and he was an absolute pleasure to work with. We had him on coach's corner multiple times. I hope BV is able to keep him. I, I think he's going to be a great coach down the line. I really do. But you lost Kale Gundy, who was your ace recruiter. Right in that whole unfortunate situation. And now I, I assume you're anticipating Emmett Jones to step in and kind of fill that void of being like the go to guy there in the state of Texas. So, with those relationships, you, you're really hoping that ends up being fruitful in the DFW area when it comes to recruiting. Yeah, it needs to be. And you're right, you know, Kel Gundy, it, the amount of names that you can attach to him. Uh, of players that ended up coming to Oklahoma, whether it was whenever he was recruiting a running back, recruiting a wide receiver, um, you know, one of the best, like, since he started at recruiting. And, you know, also a great talent developer, just a great all-around coach, um, you know, passing game, protection schemes, really well-versed with all that he's done there. So, 
it really was a big hole to fill. So this is a big time hire and we'll see. I, you know, I, you, it, things are cyclical and, and at times you, you know, for a long time, I felt like, you know, we may worry about a lot of things at Oklahoma, but receiver is not ever going to be one of them. And then we kind of find ourselves in a spot right now where it's like, hey, we don't have very much returning production coming back. We got a lot of potential, right? There's a lot of potential there, but, you know, something's got to happen. So, you know, he's he's stepping into, like, a lot of coaches would kill to be able to step into the room that he's got, right, talent-wise. But there's going to be some pressure there for those guys to perform. And there's going to be some pressure on Emma Jones to develop those guys. Mm-hmm. But like, he needs to be the guy that takes Jalil Farouk to another level. He needs to be the guy that helps Nick Anderson, Jaden Gibson figure it out. Mm-hmm. Like, push them to figure it out. And whatever, and I, I've not met Emmett Jones. Uh, you know, talked to some people there at Tech yesterday. They had nothing but incredible things to say about him other than they were upset he was leaving. But I, I'm interested to see, you know, when we're able to get out there for a couple of spring practices, like what his style is, what his approach is. There, There's no perfect style of coaching, but – He's going to have to do whatever he's going to have to do to get the most out of that group. Cause you're right. The production, there's just not a lot coming back, but the talent there's, there's no doubt they've got size, they've got speed, they've got talent, right? But it's going to be on him to get the most out of that group. And I don't know if LaDamian Washington was getting the most out of that guy. Like that's up for LaDamian Washington and those players to know. Right. But all I know is the, the guy that had double the yards of everyone else in that room is is moving on to Marvin Mims. So somebody, and it's gotta be multiple people have to fill that void, have to replace that production. And clearly a lot of that depends on Dylan Gabriel and the way he plays at quarterback and how the offensive line protects it, all that stuff, how you run the football, all of it's connected, but it also is going to be really dependent on how Emmett Jones develops that room. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, you're right. It, everything is always connected in football. Um, the way you run the ball, the way you, the block, the way you protect accuracy from quarterback vision, at quarterback throwing the ball to the right place. But you know, sometimes it just comes down to flat out. Can you win your one-on-one battles? Uh, you know, especially when it comes to some man to man stuff, like we saw down the stretch of the season and, Like, that's what we've got to have. We've got to have guys that can go out and win their one-on-ones. And we'll see. Uh, Again, talent is all there. Uh, Measurables are there. They're even even supplementing some talent to come in and help maybe to push some guys a little bit, maybe some more uh, coming as well. So it's, it's always super competitive at wide receiver, no matter where you are to get on the field. And I, right now, I you got to feel pretty strong about Jalil Farouk coming back to be one of the the top maybe the guy, but I I think it's totally up into the air. I I don't know if you had to pick who the top three leading receivers were next year, I, it'd be difficult to do it. Now you could probably come up with some names where you hoped it was these three, and if it's those three, things probably look pretty good. But right now, I don't know. Yeah, it's like, hey, is Stogner? Going to be a 600, 700 yard guy. Perhaps. Right. Willis was what, j- short of 600 yeah. this season? And he was the second leading receiver on the team. Leading and led in touchdowns, right? Yeah. Seven. And, and Lebby, Lebby majors in 11 personnel. So who's going to fill that void with Braden Mil- Willis moving on? I know that's not the wide receiver room, but we're talking the pass game in general, like in, in its totality. So there are question marks. And Emmett Jones is going to have to hit the ground running and address all of that and get some guys to the level they need to be at yeah. before well, the season rolls around. And it's, it's not easy. No, it's not. The other thing is, you know, I'll be interested to see uh, what impact he has on the passing game, you know, cause he's also labeled as passing game coordinator, but 
you know, we all know that sometimes these are just, it's a label for, uh, you know, to get you another bump in pay, right? right. If, you know, we can bring in as a receiver coach. Well, that's not enough money. Well, let's see if we make you the pass game coordinator. We give you a bump here. Like sometimes that's how it works. It's like being executive VP at, you know, a company, right? They just slap something on the old tag, but I, if he is going to have an influence on the passing game, and that is one of the reasons they brought him is, you know, maybe there's some, some things that they liked about the tech passing game, which really caught some fire late in the season. And maybe they're wanting wanting to implement some of those traits. I don't know. That's something to watch as well. Yeah, I, I thought it was interesting when you looked at the statement that Emmett Jones had in the official release. It was, yeah, he wants to win championships. He knows what the OU brand's all about. I get that. But the thing that stood out to me was what he said about working with Levy. And that made me wonder, right, with how how connected Levy is in the t Texas high school football scene. I, I wonder if there's a there was a relationship there and, you know, Lebby was one of the guys that was really vouching for Jones. I don't know, but I, I thought it was interested that he called out Lebby in general is like, Hey, I really like what he's doing. I'm interested to learn more. And it, it's always valuable to combine concepts like, yep. and, and to get some new fresh ideas when it comes to the passing game. And Hey, maybe Emmett Jones he can say, hey, guys, I've got some good stuff in the intermediate passing game. I think we can add it. I think we can add some mid-level throws. And that is something that you and I, we we talked quite a bit about throughout yep. the season. So we'll we'll see. But just the reaction of some of the tech people I know, and some of them are coaches on that staff, that were like, hey, you're getting a good one. Uh, just from the statements that BV put out, like it, it seems like this is a – this is a really good hire. I'm I'm hopeful they can hold on to LaDamian Washington and, you know, BV in that statement, he said, Hey, we're fighting like heck to keep him, which, you know, when BV says something, he he's a very persuasive man. So we'll see if they're able to hold on to him. I think that would be big because the players love him. Yeah. And you, you've seen it on social media, all these guys throughout the season. When I talked to him about LaDamian Washington were just extremely complimentary about his approach, uh, not only as a coach, but kind of as, you know, someone that can bounce stuff other than football off of, which I think is important, but we'll see. But seems like we should be pretty excited about how this whole thing unfolded. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited. And, you know, you could take them for what they're worth, but there's all, I guess it's the social media thing, right? But I guess there's also been some rumors floated out there that, um, you know, perhaps some other players may uh, may try and follow him and jump into the portal, but I guess you never know how some of that stuff is going to unfold. Um, we'll see, but the wide receiver room is going to be – that's that's one of the, the spots of focus throughout spring. And I know, like, as we dial it in, we'll hit every single position group and probably every, every player, but – uh, whenever you look, step back and look at the whole thing as a whole right now, that's that's one of the spots where, where we're kind of anxious to see who emerges. No doubt.